in this video I'm going to overview the entire Agile PM plugin series to give you, if you like, an index or a mind map that will help you navigate the number of videos that are going to be in the entire series. I've structured it so it's around the normal steps of project planning, so you can see there's one integrated set of tools, which it is, but alternatively, you can actually treat each set of videos as a standalone. So, for example, if you're concerned around stakeholders, interested in building and maintaining great relationships with the stakeholders, in the video series four, we have a set of smaller videos that give you tools that can help you do that. That's the structure of the entire series. In video three, we look at the whole of life model. Now, this is a really different way of thinking about projects from the traditional view of projects. We look at this holistic end-to-end -end picture of a project, and it changes almost everything around what you know about project management. Very different way of thinking about projects and much more powerful. In the series four, we look at the managing and building of relationships with stakeholders. And in the sub videos in that series, there's an incredible set of tools that can help you, including one of my favorites, which is the win-lose tool. In tutorial five, we look at a really misunderstood and typically forgotten, but critical step in setting up a project for success which is having conversations with your sponsor and the most in or critical important stakeholders around what their expectations of success are. And we're going way beyond the old iron triangle of on time in budget to requirements. As I've said many times, the best time to define success is up the front of the project at the beginning. The worst time is after you've gone live. In tutorial six, we look at a whole set of tools that can help you understand scope in a much simpler and much more powerful way. And in this set of tutorials, we look at the what's called the O3 model, a really powerful way of looking at scope and objectives, outputs and outcomes. In the series of videos in tutorial seven, we take the O3 model, which we introduced in the previous video series, and explore how you can use the O3 to do some amazing things. Help you do a benefit scan, help you understand which benefit owners are going to be impacted by each of the elements of the O3 model, to help you set up most fundamentally importantly a benefit realization plan. In tutorial eight, we introduce a very different take on what quality is. You know, we're not looking at the traditional PMI stuff around quality planning and quality control and quality plans. We're looking at a much more fundamental set of tools that help you get your head around what does quality mean? And more importantly, what does it mean for the sponsor and the critical stakeholders? What are they prepared to pay for? This comes into a tool called the Quality Agreement which in some of our clients is the favorite, almost the favorite of all the Agile plugin tools. So a very different take of quality in that video eight series. The series nine takes a very alternative view of project risk. I mean, it's based on the traditional ideas of risk analysis and risk memos and risk reporting, but it introduces a much broader concept of risk which reflects the whole of life model we talked about in the early videos. It also explores some of the issues around risk in terms of using it proactively instead of just simply passively reporting it. Video 10 almost goes back to prehistory time when the waterfall was the only development strategy available to us. And despite what many people think that you've got this sort of dichotomy between waterfall and agile, as we'll explore in this video tutorial, there are many alternative models to the waterfall which take the best of the waterfall and also include some of the elements of agile. And these development strategies such as time boxing, evolutionary, are often ideas that people don't even consider when they think about the initial setting up of a project. Tutorial 11 looks at estimating but beyond just simple what's estimating, we look at different approaches to estimating and primarily things like wideband Delphi, which is the basis of what many of you will know as planning poker. But we also explore 
the issues around sensitivity analysis, the ideas of contingency and so on. So a very different view on what most people think about estimating. Tutorial 12 is a series of videos that put all of this together into an integrated whole, which results in a thing called rapid planning or RAP sessions. And RAP sessions have been proven to dramatically decrease the time it's gonna take you to build a business case. But more importantly, increase the level of ownership, engagement, buy-in and quality of your business case. And we also explore some of the variations of wraps where you can use say one or two of the Agile plugins in a mini wrap. In the series 13, we explore some of the issues around people and people management. As I've said hundreds of times, project management is fundamentally about the management of creative people. That's what project management is when you boil it down to the essence. And whereas some people call this soft stuff, I'm going to make an argument that managing people, understanding what drives them, understanding how to influence them, understanding, for example, what is the issues for people around projects and the impact of projects on them, like we looked at in the win-lose tool, are the hardest issues that project managers are going to face. The final video is where I try and summarise from nearly half a century, 50 years of project management, teaching, consulting, doing it, researching it, writing about it. What are the five most important lessons I've learned that all project managers need to learn, hopefully in a shorter period than it took me to learn them?